Christmas lights, a topic I haven't covered for a couple of reasons. One, there are a lot bigger channels that cover them pretty thoroughly, and two, I have not put up lights in quite a while. I received a few messages after I mentioned doing a Christmas light video on the podcast. Smarter Circuits, the podcast, new episodes every Friday, get it where you get your podcasts, unless it's Apple. So here I am doing this video. I have always loved putting up lights, minus being cold most of the time. The only reason I haven't for so long is just that I've been otherwise too busy. Many years ago, I was a member of a forum called Computer Christmas that was devoted to relay-controlled lights and the like. Back then, we used the old parallel printer port. When I do lights, I like to try to create interesting visual effects, and this year I've finally done something I really should have done a long time ago. I used WS2812B RGB LEDs for some of my lights this year. If you're unfamiliar, the WS2812B RGB LED is an addressable 5 volt LED that you can control with any small control board you like. I use the Raspberry Pi Pico, but I know a lot of people prefer ESP32, and that's fine. I just have a lot of these and I'm comfortable with them. These LEDs have some drawbacks, as most things do. They're a bit finicky about voltage and signal speed, but for what we'll be doing, those aren't issues. As far as brightness or color quality, I have no complaints, nor has anyone that has seen what I've done with my lights. I will say that they can't produce a true white light, but again, for what we'll be doing, I don't see it as much of an issue. Connecting these lights to the Pico couldn't be easier, but there are going to be feelings about what I'm about to show you. You see, these lights are really expecting a 5 volt supply as well as a 5 volt data signal, but the Pico only supplies 3 volts through the GPIO. Normally, one would get around this with one of these gizmos, or similar. This is a logic level converter that allows you to have bi-directional communication with two devices using the same signal type, but with different voltages. I've been told that using 3 volts with these LEDs will produce unexpected colors or miscommunications, and I've even been told that it can be damaging to the LEDs. Neither of these things is practically true. I've driven WS2812B LEDs with Raspberry Pis for years without a logic level converter. Do I recommend you do the same? Not if you don't mind the minor extra steps and extra component, but I don't think you'll have any trouble if you omit the converter either. One cool thing about these LEDs is that they usually come with a few of these. Um, not really wire harnesses, sort of. Anyway, they come with these things. The three wires are hot, data, and ground. There's also these two extra wires for hot and ground, which are really handy for supplying power to the whole setup. Simply connect the hot to the VBUS pin of the Pico and the ground to any of the ground pins. For the data wire, I usually use GPIO 22 or 16 if I'm using a prefabricated board or display that uses 22. Now I can use the two extra wires to supply power to both the lights and the Pico, which makes everything that much neater. As far as the power supply requirement, the Pico will use at most about 100 milliamp on average, and each LED with all three colors at max will use 60 milliamps. This means that 100 LEDs at full brightness will draw 6 amps. The general rule of thumb is to only draw 80%, so make sure you use an adequate power supply. For my longest string of RGB LEDs, which is 250 LEDs, I have a 40 amp power supply. If you are doing this as well, you may want to use thicker wires that run closer to the middle of the string for efficiency. Now, the really fun part. Making them do stuff. I'm not going to bore you with the specifics of the script, which I'll put on the GitHub and share a link in the description. Instead, I'll explain how the script works and how each of the patterns I've developed works. First, in order to have smooth animation and be able to do more than one effect at a time, I'll show you a use case for that shortly, I decided to create functions that figure out what the state of the current animation frame is, rather than playing the entire effect. This also allows me to read input quickly without having to wait in between effects. Another thing I'm doing in the script is figuring out what all of the LEDs should be set to, then setting only the ones that have changed after all of the frame logic is done. This is very similar to the way a game loop works. 
First, check to see if a button is in a new state. Then, change the mode, brightness, or anything else I want when a button is pressed. Then, move on to figuring out what state the LEDs should be in based on the mode. Finally, apply only the changes to the LED strip. Here are the modes I've created. There's Solid Color, which sets all of the LEDs to one color. There's Solid Pattern, which will repeat any pattern you give it over all of the LEDs. And there's Color Wheel, or Rainbow, which is pretty self-explanatory. There's a Chase Mode that sends any number of pulses of a set color down the string. There's a Random Mode that sets all of the LEDs to a random color every few seconds. And there's a Random One Mode that sets one LED to a random color every few seconds. This is Raindrop Mode, which sets several random pixels and fades them out. This is Twinkle Mode, which is like Raindrop Mode and Random Mode put together. This is Fireflies Mode, which is supposed to behave, well, like fireflies. This is Drop and Stack Mode, which was specifically designed for LEDs wrapped around a post or pole so that it looks like dots are being dropped from the top and slowly stacking until the whole thing is the dropped color. The script can also apply individual effects to preset sections of the string. My lamp post is next to this little tree. I wanted to put lights in the tree, so I needed to use power from the lamp post. Instead of having two power supplies and two controllers, I set up two sections on one controller and applied two different effects to them. At night, the fireflies effect looks really neat in this tree. It's unexpected and sort of delightful when you notice it. The controls for this device are as follows. The first button toggles section selection mode, the second cycles modes when you're not in section selection mode, and the third selects a section when you're in section selection mode. This is the whole house lit up. The lights behind the icicle lights on the inside edge of the soffit are WS2812B LEDs, which have several sections set to solid color. The lights on the ledge below the windows are WS2812Bs, which are all set to solid pattern. And the lamp post and little tree are, as you saw a moment ago, also WS2812Bs, with two different sections set to different effects. The pole is set to solid color, and the tree is set to fireflies. I don't have anything set to a moving or flashing setting as not to disturb the neighbors. I may change this later on, I haven't decided yet. I didn't get the head start I used to get on planning this time, but next year I'll cover my entire process and the design of a few new effects I have planned. Normally when I do lights, they're much more elaborate, but this was sort of done on a whim. Speaking of doing things on a whim, perhaps you'd like to support the channel by clicking on that icon. You know the one. It's free and it lets YouTube know my videos might be worth watching. If you're really into what I'm doing here, maybe subscribe or even become a member like these fine folks. Members get early access to videos and extra content. Members also get a neat title and access to members-only channels on the Discord. To everyone watching, I want to thank you for your minutes. We all get an unknown and limited supply of minutes, and you've spent some of yours with me. I sincerely appreciate that, and I hope you'll join me for future videos as I continue building and exploring smarter circuits.